All right, we're here for lesson six, dilations on the coordinate plane. So we're just going to do a little bit more work with using FTS from lesson four and five and just doing some more examples so that we can figure out without actually graphing what the new coordinates are of dilated points. So again, the materials you're going to need for this is plenty of graph paper and a ruler. So look at and write a claim about the effect that dilation has on the coordinates of dilated points. So this is our first example. The graph below represents a dilation from the center 0, 0 by a scale factor of r equals 2. So go ahead and sketch this out and take a look at what is happening with the points, how the points relate to the other points and how that is related to the scale factor of R2. So check to see if your claim was correct. Verify the claim that you made about the last graph with the one below. So the graph below represents a dilation from the center 0, 0 by a scale factor of 4. So go ahead and sketch this one out. Notice what we have for our coordinate points. Make sure you write those down so that you can see the relationship between the coordinate points. So in lesson five, we found the location of, of a dilated point by using the knowledge of dilation and the scale factor, as well as the lines of coordinate plane to ensure equal angles to find the coordinates of, di of the dilated point. For example, we were given a point of A is 5, 2, and told the scale factor of dilation was R equals 2. Now again, without even having a graph, I know that if it's a scale factor of 2, that our dilation is going to magnify or make our, uh, move our point further away from 0. So we created the following picture and determined the location of A prime to be 10, 4. So here is our 5, 2. And as we figure out where B is and then figure B prime, then we go back and figure A prime is 10, 4. So we can use this information and the observations we made at the beginning of the class to develop a shortcut for finding the coordinates of dilated points when the center of the dilation is the origin. Now again, this only works when the center of dilation is the origin. That is key. Notice that the horizontal distance from the x-axis to point A was multiplied by a scale factor of 2. That is, the x-coordinate of point A was multiplied by a scale factor of 2. So similarly, the vertical distance from the x-axis to point A was multiplied by a scale factor of 2. That's not a coincidence. So here are the coordinates of point A, 5, 2, and the dilated point A prime, 10, 4. Since the scale factor was 2, we can more easily see what happened to the coordinates of A after the dilation if we write the coordinates of A prime as 2 times 5 and 2 times 2. That is, the scale factor of 2 multiplied by each of the coordinates of point A to get A prime. The reasoning goes back to our understanding of the dilation, the length of the scale factor times the original length of OB is equal to the length of OB prime. And the length of R times the original length of AB, or the scale factor of R times the original length AB is equal to the length of A prime B prime. Therefore, our scale factor is the length of OB prime over the length of OB is equal to the length of A prime B prime over the length of AB. Where the length of segment OB prime is the X coordinate of the dilated point, in this case 10, and the length of segment A prime B prime is the Y coordinate of the dilated point, 
which is 4. In other words, based on what we know about the lengths of dilated segments, when the center of dilation is the origin, we can determine the coordinates of a dilated point by multiplying each of the coordinates in the original point by the scale factor. Again, only when the dilation is from the origin. All right, example two. Let's take another look at example from lesson five. We were given the point A is 7, 6 and asked to find the location of the dilated point A prime when our scale factor is 11 over 7. Our work on this problem led us to the coordinates of 11 and 9 and 4 tenths for point A prime. Verify that we could get the same result if we multiply each of the coordinates of point A by the scale factor. That means multiply 7 times 11 sevenths and 6 times 11 sevenths. So A prime is exactly what I said earlier, which is 11 and 9.4. So therefore, multiplying each coordinate by the scale factor produced the desired result. All right, for example three. The coordinates in the other quadrants of the graph are affected in the same manner as we have just seen. So all this time we've been working in quadrant one, but what if we have a graph that occurs in either quadrants two, three, or four? So based on what we have learned so far, given point A, if that would be negative two, three, predict the location of A prime when A is dilated from a center at the origin, zero, zero, by a scale factor of R equals three. Well, we would just multiply 3 times negative 2 and 3 times 3, so our A prime coordinate would be negative 6, 9. Verify this by graphing it on a coordinate plane. As before, mark a point B on the x-axis, then the length of OB prime is equal to the scale factor times the length of OB, where is B prime located? Since the length of OB is 2, then OB prime is 3 times 2, which is 6. But we are looking at a distance to the left of 0, therefore the location of B prime would be negative 6, 0. Now that we know exactly where B prime is, it is easy, easily to find the location of A prime. It will be on the ray OA, but at what location? Well, the location of A prime is negative 6, 9, as desired. All right, go ahead and try exercises 1 through 5. Once you are done with those, go ahead and continue the video to check your answers. All right, you should have exercises 1 through 5 completed. So this is what you should have. And again, you don't have to graph these because we can figure out the points just by using FTS. If you have any questions, go ahead and mark them down so we can go over them in class. All right, continuing on, let's take a look at another example, example four. We will learn the multiplicative effect of scale factor on a two-dimensional figure. Now that we know the multiplicative relationship between a point and its dilated location, for example, if point P is P sub 1, P sub 2, is dilated from the origin by a scale factor R, then P prime is equal to R times P sub 1 and R times P sub 2. We can quickly find the coordinates of any point, including those that comprise a two-dimensional figure under a dilation of any scale factor. So for example, triangle ABC has coordinates of A is 2, 3, B is negative 3, 4, and C is 5, 7. The triangle being dilated from the origin with a scale factor of 4, what are the coordinates of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime? You shouldn't even need to sketch this out. You can just use our, what we've proven so far and do this arithmetically. Well, first you're going to find the coordinates of A prime. 
So that would be 4 times 2 and 4 times 3, which is 8, 12. Next, you're going to do the lo locate the coordinates of B prime. So that would be 4 times negative 3 and 4 times 4. Four coordinate of negative 12, 16. And finally, locate the coordinates of C prime, which would be 4 times 5 and 4 times 7, which is a coordinate of 20, 28. So therefore, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime will have coordinates of 8, 12, negative 12, 16, and 20, 28, respectively. Respectively means in order. So if we talk about A prime, B prime, C prime, then the coordinates have to go in that same order. All right, example five. We will learn the multiplicative effect of scale factor on a two-dimensional finger. So a parallelogram ABCD has coordinates of negative 2, 4, 4, 4, 2, negative 1, and negative 4, negative 1, respectively. Find the coordinates of parallelogram A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime after a dilation from the origin with a scale factor of 1 half. So what do you think this is going to be? If we were to draw this parallelogram, would it be a magnification or a reduction? Well, it would be a reduction. So therefore, all our coordinates should be closer to the origin than our original coordinates. And if you multiply each one of these, this is what you should have. Negative 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, negative half, negative 2, negative half. All right, now go ahead and do exercises th 6 through 8. When you are done with those, go ahead and continue the video to check your answers. All right, number six, go ahead and check your work, check your answers, and go ahead and make sure you show the dilation. Actually, you can't show the dilation in this respect because they are too big. But this would be the original figure, and if you dilate out, it's going to encompass this whole area. This one you can show on the graph. So here is, again, from the dilation of the origin, this would be a reduction of two-thirds. So this inner figure is two-thirds the size of the original figure. And same thing here. Again, it's a little bit more offset because this origin is not included in our graph like it was in problem seven. So it just looks like it's, it's also being translated but really what it is is the rays um, show, a, um, in this case, a reduction as it moves closer to the center. So this smaller triangle is one-third the size of the larger triangle. All right, so we know that we can calculate the coordinates of a dilated point given the coordinates of an original point and the scale factor. To find the coordinates of a dilated point, we must multiply both the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate by the scale factor of dilation. If we know how to find the coordinates of a dilated point, we can find the location of a dilated triangle or other two-dimensional figure. And again, the key point being that these are all radiating from the origin of the coordinate graph. All right, we'll see you in class.